You're a natural sailor, Duncan. I did a decent trick at the helm some time ago. Two years before the mast as a privateer. Dash my buttons. Your life seems a grand one, if I may say. So full of adventure. How marvelous. I've seen my share of strangeness, I. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag doesn't forget its roots. This is a game full of cities like Kingston and Havana, with rooftops waiting to be leapt across and corrupt political officials in need of assassinating. But what makes Black Flag so special is the way it takes those familiar concepts of freedom and exploration and uses them to capture the thrill of sailing the open sea. It's the most ambitious Assassin's Creed game in years and an incredible adventure by any standard. The world of Black Flag is nothing short of remarkable. Burgeoning colonies and dense jungles reflect Ubisoft's typical attention to detail, but then you have the remote islands inhabited by nothing more than crabs and sea turtles, or underwater shipwrecks where the only thing more abundant than the submerged riches are the sharks swirling around you. This is without a doubt the most expansive and diverse world the series has ever seen. The sense of adventure that comes from sailing around to these different parts of the world is one of the many things that makes Black Flag so terrific. It's more than the sight of a humpback whale leaping into the air or that moment when you first hear your crew break out into a sea shanty. No, it's the feeling that there's always something out there to be discovered, rewards waiting to be captured no matter who's standing in your way. Early into the game, your goal is to turn your rickety pirate ship into a force to be reckoned with. Black Flag gives you a diverse number of ways to collect the coin and resources needed to upgrade your ship. Whether you're searching for gold using a crudely drawn treasure map, raiding a military storehouse for the wood and metal needed to bolster the hull of your ship, or just rescuing shipwrecked sailors at sea and recruiting them into your crew, it's not just a beautiful world, it's a world full of tangible reasons to go exploring. Well, exploring and fighting, because naval combat plays a huge role in your adventures. These battles are exhilarating contests of naval supremacy, where strategic positioning is far more important than a quick trigger finger. It's a system that allows for a variety of tactics while never getting bogged down in overly complex controls. No matter whether you're picking off enemies from afar with mortar strikes or just dropping explosive barrels into the pathway of an unsuspecting ship, waging sea battles is an absolute delight. Naval combat is hardly some discreet game mode in Black Flag. It's a fundamental part of the game that's intertwined with virtually every gameplay system. Swinging aboard a ship and forcing its crew to surrender will net you even greater rewards than destroying it from afar, while taking on a seaside fortress by ship and then running in to assassinate its officers will unlock even more treasures and activities on the map. It's a game with a fantastic sense of progression, and every part of the game is linked together in a meaningful way. Pacing issues that plagued Assassin's Creed 3 are nowhere to be found here, as Black Flag wastes no time throwing you into the life of a pirate. The story revolves around Edward Kenway, a charming rogue from England by way of Wales who's come to the Caribbean to find fortune in order to make a better life back home. Kenway's backstory is nothing special, but his place in the Assassin's Creed fiction is. He's neither an assassin nor Templar, playing the two sides off one another for his own gain. It's a terrific story that paints larger-than-life pirates in a human light, touching on universal themes like the fading luster of youth and a longing for home in faraway places. Alas, it was to none but me. The story told in the few brief trips to the present day isn't quite as impactful, but hacking into the emails of Abstergo Entertainment employees it does offer an interesting look into a very different side of the Abstergo story arc. Watch it here or at your animus. I think you'll love it. Black Flag doesn't have a lot of flaws, but there are a couple. 
Hide and seek multiplayer returns from previous games, but sadly without any creative wrinkles to freshen up the formula. And then there's the over reliance on tailing and eavesdropping missions in single player. These types of missions were already starting to gather dust in Assassin's Creed 3, and they haven't gotten any better with time. But your time on dry land is hardly business as usual. An improved crafting system similar to Far Cry 3 gives you a far greater incentive to go hunting for wild animals, while things like being able to sabotage alarm bells adds more depth to the stealth gameplay. Add in the absurd number of side missions and collectibles found in cities, and you've got an on-foot experience that serves as a terrific complement to the new focus on sailing the open seas. And that really is a theme in Black Flag. This is a hugely ambitious game, with a lot of very different component parts to it. Yet those parts are all linked together through a fantastic sense of progression and seamless transitions between naval combat and traditional sword fighting. Each part is fantastic in its own right, but together they create something truly special. If there was ever a question that Assassin's Creed needed something ambitious to get the series back on track, Black Flag is that game and then some.